Jesus Christ is Sovereign Lord. This is part one of Trust and Be Silent. St. John's Gospel, chapter 11. And first of all, the first six verses. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. It is so easy and so common that we want to be, as it were, active in the service of God. We want to be full of enthusiasm. Yet, there is power, undoubtedly power and authority, which comes rather through trusting and being silent. Hearing from God and then being one with God in what He wants to do rather than what we think He might want to do. Oh, In these days, where is that being one with God? Rather than thinking we know, as it were, better than God. That place of silence. Rather than rushing, oh, those that verse in Psalm forty six Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in all the earth. Where? Where is the trust in God these days? In quietness and confidence shall be my strength. Are you in quietness, in confidence? For God has not lost control. He never will lose control. Now in this account regarding Lazarus 
And these two sisters, Mary and Martha, what can we, can we glean as it were? What can we see in this? All scripture is wonderful. And it's there to show us, to teach us, to instruct us in the ways of God. And here, Jesus is showing us that he, even as having the identification with the human, That he was still in complete trust with the Father. And he shows us that silence that he heard, he heard from the Father. And he was able to act in authority and in power in whatever situation he came into. And Lazarus, the account tells us, was sick. And there was concern from the two sisters, Mary and Martha. Jesus was a, a friend of theirs. And he'd made such an impression upon them that when their situation became desperate, that they turned to the one that they could put their whole trust in. Jesus. And it's as though there is a plea here, a cry from the heart of these two sisters. Behold he whom thou lovest is sick. He had an expectation for Jesus to come right away. In order to what? To heal Lazarus' sickness. Yet Jesus, he knew that there was a greater need because he knew that Lazarus would die. And he was prepared to let Lazarus die. So that a greater work of God would be done. Yet, as Jesus spoke to his disciples, He made it clear, oh, this sickness is not unto death, even though Jesus knew that Lazarus would die. Yet Jesus knew 
that God is greater than death. And here he is saying, This is the sickness, is for the glory of God. Whatever the situation you might find yourself in, Do you panic? Or are you trusting and being silent for the glory of God, for God to do greater things? Greater is he that is in you and he that is in the world. Do you believe that? Where is that believing it today? When you're one with God, complete harmony with him, letting him have his own way, not hindering him, And you will see the glory of God. Because it's for the glory of God. Even in the mundane things of the daily life. The glory of God. Being manifested. Being expressed. Coming through. And what does Jesus further say? It's as though the disciples did not hear this. That the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Here he is saying, I am the Son of God. Do you believe me? Will you accept me? Where in these days is the acceptance that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God for the glory of God? Yes, Jesus, he loved, we're told, Martha and their sister and Lazarus. But yet he was going to be for the great glory of God. That this miracle was going to take place. And it was to be not simply a healing of sickness, but a miracle of bringing back from the dead. Oh, the ways of God. are often beyond our understanding. It is ways beyond your understanding at times. Or are you prepared day by day 
to trust him and be silent to let him so work in you and through you to his own glory so Jesus did not react he did not rush he did not go straight away we're told he took he waited two days then after that when he knew within himself that Lazarus was dead he was ready to go God's timing is always perfect and one thing is for sure God created time and he created plenty of it it's going in harmony in unity as one with God rather than rushing ahead of him and knowing what God wants what he wants to do now his disciples Oh, they said to him, well, they hadn't grasped this at all. They failed to pick up that Jesus had said, he made this claim that he is the son of God. And they looked at what was around them. They looked back at what had taken place. that the Jews had sought to, to stone Jesus had that changed Jesus in any way? no, no he knew he knew as he was one in unity knowing the Father he knew what to do each and every day yes he waited upon the father he had complete trust in the father and he was silent oh how many hours possibly did he spend during the night with the father in prayer He was not rushed. Acting as one with the Father. Let's go down to verse 11. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. They were very much out of tune as it were with Jesus. 
They couldn't understand what he, he was on about. They looked in the natural. And it's being in the spirit. Abiding. Not just sometimes. How can you abide just sometimes? It's abiding all the time. And it's abiding in the one who is life. God himself. The life. There's only one life. And that's God. And without the life of God within us, we're dead. We're dead to God. We have no life. Just pure existence. Nothing but existence. Jesus was speaking here of the death of Lazarus. And he had to, to tell them directly. Oh, they were concerned, thinking, oh, he's sleeping, he's doing well. Jesus came out and said, Lazarus is dead. An absolute finality here. That Lazarus was without hope. Unless the one who is life brought life into Lazarus again. Yes, it would have been quite something for those, the sisters, to have seen, oh, Jesus come and uh, bring about the healing. But Jesus was to come and do that which was of God as a miracle to bring life out of death. I'm glad he says for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye what? Ye may believe. Where is the believing in these days? Where is the expectancy in these days? And Thomas, he completely was out of it with his response. There was total unbelief there. Let us also go that we may die with him. What was all that about? And in these days, it is being. Oh, what is so missing in these days? It is that which takes God and his word and believes God and his word and speaks life by being one with God.
speaking out with the authority of God within. God in all his life and authority, his power being released, released through those who are his empty vessels here upon earth. O oh God, in these days of great unbelief, so bring into that being as one with you that there is that trust and that being silent that at any time you can do in fact all the time you can do in and through those who are entirely yours that which brings glory to thyself. Amen.